I have been selling this book, Zanaz Lee and Wan Chun Hong's Guide to Indie Filmmaking, which is published by MPH for a while now. It's a really good book. If you want to be a filmmaker, whether it's for YouTube, social media, TV, film, cinema, whatever, this is the book to get. I'm going to make it more accessible and more affordable to all of you because I believe that everybody needs to become a filmmaker. The more filmmakers we have in the world, I think this world will be a better place to live in. Now it's available as an electronic book download on my website. I'm going to link it here. It's really cheap. It's really affordable. It's only five ringgit if you want to get the ebook version. Okay, five ringgit. It doesn't really cost much, right? It's just a little bit of something for me. I mean, it did take a lot of work to write. Each chapter of this book talks about one part of the filmmaking process. And for each chapter as well, I interview a local filmmaker. It's only five ringgit. It's only five ringgit. Okay, so you're watching and listening to the Family Film Club and I'm assuming I'm Zan Azli. As usual, every week we watch a local film and we review it. This week we are reviewing Pulau, the one, the trailer got a lot of porn, the one that supposedly got porn, the one. Ah, at the gala's feeling. Too loud, uh, too hyped up, not our thing. You just watch the film, ah, isn't it? Okay, bye. Hey! Hey! Who's there? Who's there? Who's there? Lima, palima, bintang! Lima! So, we went to the premiere of Pulau. Here are some scenes of the premiere. Because your movie is about to launch very very soon, so what you would like to share to all the people out there, especially in Facebook and TikTok people there? Oh, very excited about the film coming out. I hope everybody out there is excited about the film coming out. We've got the ocean, the jungles, the caves. We're ready to show the best of Malaysia. We've got monsters, you'll laugh, you'll cry. It's going to be fantastic. I'm very excited. I can't wait for everybody out there to see the film. Yes, and if you can add, well, all the places that you said is the one beautiful place in Malaysia. Where is that place? Well, I mean, Langkawi is fantastic. And not only that, we've got some of the best cast some of the youngest, best-looking cast in Malaysia. Yeah. These, are, these are upcoming stars. These are people who are going to be international. Yeah, there you go. That's the hope and vision that we look forward for Pulau to go to international level with all diverse and talented talent. Right. So, you go. Okay, now, look at what you're nervous. Why are you getting nervous? This is the first time I stand on the stage here and face so many uh, uh, familiar faces. Okay. Um, yeah, I feel a bit nervous, yes. Nervous, don't get Daddy. And the light can speak, I think, I think uh -huh. you hold the direction for the film. You, you, it's going to be unforgettable. He had a great vision for the film. I mean, he drew everything out before uh -huh. we even made it. Uh -huh. So, uh, be ready. Be ready to see this guy's vision. Thank you. Yes, be ready to watch a nice... Okay, maybe you are one thing. You are the director. Why they really need to watch Pull Out? Tell to all the people out there. Because uh, this... This film has a lot of incredible uh, um, actors, actors and actresses. Um, yeah. So um, the, the whole movie will lead everyone to a, a, a journey. So I think it is uh, compelling and uh, thrilling. 
hopefully uh, we get the support from uh, all nations and uh, hopefully Pulau shines a light and make the success in local movie. Yes. yes. Dan yang paling penting sekali, ini adalah naskah pertama Yuho sepenuhnya dalam bahasa Melayu guys. Sebut dengan kata Yuho. Oh, baru lah dia macam, um, cukup korem. Ah, okay. So we... Okay, look at the main camera first, yeah. Look at the main camera first. Ah, okay. Uh, it's, it's too loud. I don't like loud things like this. Overhyped. Yeah. Overhyped, overhyped. So every time we go to a Web TV Asia um, premiere, there's always a problem one, like... The rising Kalila one, there was a problem. And then this one also, they had a problem with our tickets, so... I don't know lah, maybe we just really like got no judo or what. But that doesn't really affect how we feel about but, the film lah. But I feel a bit uh, awkward lah, because we were actually not invited for the premiere. But a mm. friend said he could get... No, for rise we were. Yeah, but we're talking about this, this one now, one right? Lah, yeah. uh, you said there was a problem with the ticket. A friend had asked if he wanted to go, he could probably get our name on the, on mm. the invitation list lah, which he did. Uh, and then, well, I wasn't there lah. Then after that, they, they couldn't find the ticket, eh? Mm. Yeah. yeah, and they were pretty rude about it. But anyway, so we got our tickets in the end. And then we watched the film. Mm. Uh, the, like, the whole lineup of the cast was there. And, uh, yeah, so, the film came out on yesterday. The film came out yesterday. Okay, so uh, this, this this is the film where the trailer got got yeah. some controversy because apparently it's like porn, a lot of uh, actually no porn also. It's tame compared to any other Hollywood movie that comes out in Malaysia also. Mm. But for some reason, this one got a lot of controversy, and then Minister also cannot must cannot be like that and all that kind of mm. thing lah. Then, then they, they had to redo the they trailer. Redo the trailer, and then apparently like most of those scenes in the trailer it doesn't really reflect the film anyway because yeah. you know, yeah. they cut out like 10 scenes from the film mm. to get LPF certified anyway so the film is about uh, a group of young people young-ish people uh, who are college friends lah. and then they go on a vacation uh, to some beach destination uh, and then there they meet like another group of like young adults who they know whom they know because like the it's like step someone's sister, one of their step friend, sister yeah. yeah and uh, they go snorkeling one day uh, taken by the boatman who is played by Namron and um, like one of the girls the, the main the main character um, played by Amelia Henderson she what's her name a cat so cat has like six sense, so she can like see things, feel things, and um, ever since she's gone on this trip and been on this island, she's like had these weird dreams and weird visions, uh, and then she's like snorkeling, and then she has like a what a weird vision. encounter, a weird vision, All I right. guess yeah. something, and um, they like the they're apparently at a island destination that has a lot of deserted islands so they try to convince Namron to take them to like this one island and then Namron's like no cannot go there that's like memang you cannot go ban so um one night they because the they're the rival island, the island look like a skull like uh, the island look like a skull like that so then there's like one night there's like obviously there's like a rivalry thing right so they said like it's like or you know, and then Namron tells them a story lah about the island. Apparently, it's like cursed because two hundred years there ago a, there was a village. Uh, there was a village in in the island two hundred years on the island two hundred years yeah, ago. And then the girl, and it was it's a, lady, a yeah. black figure, lembaga hitam. Yeah. Makluk hitam, like killed everybody in the village. And then they never spoke about it uh, again. They never spoke about it again because a woman like cursed the village, and then the black figure like, yala, killed everybody in the village lah. Mm. It's okay. Um, after hearing the story, because they are young, right? It's like, oh la, na tako apu. And like, okay, let's play like a game, and then the loser has to go and stay one night. The loser group has to go and stay one night at the island. Um, so our protagonist group loses because uh, while they're playing the game, this cat has a vision. And she freezes. And, and then she, she freezes. freezes. So she loses. In a dance, la. a dance on the beach. 
Yeah, it's the yeah, it's not dance, it's the bamboo, the kepi kepi thing. Yeah. So you're supposed to jump, yeah. yeah. So then, yeah. So then they go lah. They go to the island. They basically do like a bunch of stupid shit, which if you've seen any bloody horror movie, also you know you're not supposed to do all the stupid shit. Uh, if you've seen any stupid horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> so they do a bunch of stupid shit and then obviously one by one they start disappearing is the word I guess. Um and then yeah, it builds up until until the end. Lah. So what do we think of the film? You can go first. Uh, I didn't like the film. It's a horrible film. It's a boring story. It's very derivative of any other boring horror movie. Um, I don't get scared easily. I, I, I don't get scared at all. Because I don't believe in, in ghosts and all that. Except that one time he lost me on a... Yeah, but that's not being a... a grab bike. Yeah, but that's not, being, <laughs> that's not being afraid of non-existent ghosts. You know, I mean, that was afraid of you being harmed or something. Or you're missing or whatever. That's different. Um... Yeah, and you know how this horror movie, like, oh, don't do that because bad things will happen. I've gone to Jalan Gasing, Bukit Gasing, call for the ghost. None came. <laughs> I've gone. I went to boarding school. We used to go around the middle of the night, go look for Lady in Green, the White Horseman or whatever. None came. You know what I mean? And there I'm calling them. <laughs> so, so that's one thing. Lah. That lah, I'm so not easily afraid. And then you come up with a dumb story like this, which is derivative of every other I Know What You Did Last Summer movie, uh, where you've got a group of friends, six, seven of them, you go to a place that's haunted, one by one you die, you try to guess who's going to die, and you've got your stereotypical hero, you've got your stereotypical asshole, you've got your stereotypical, stereotypical hot chick, you've got your stereotypical clown of the group, you know? Uh, and for me, like, by the time halfway of the movie, I'm already hoping all of them just die and <laughs> you know, uh, it's just so boring. It's so boring, common, stereotypical bullshit. And every scare is jump scares. Uh. You know lah, the typical jump scare. The beginning of the movie also, he's driving a car, suddenly Frank come out from the side window also, BOOM! What the hell is that? What? You watch, she wasn't even driving the car, she was just sitting in the yeah, car. Yeah, and it was just a friend ni. Mm. Oh, then, what? So the audience is supposed to laugh in the seats. Oh, oh my god, the movie scared me. Uh, so, I, I don't know. It's... People want to hop on like CGI is bad lah, not because of ghosts. Or, actually, CGI is quite good. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just... A, and I also found it very, very annoying to see a group of adults like this. Young adults, no doubt. Right, young adults. But they're acting that like they're 12 years old. Mm. Having rivalries like... Like, you know our eldest daughter is in standard 5, or standard 6. Uh, that kind of rivalry with friend. I don't friend you, I don't friend me, you friend, I don't friend, don't friend. Uh, for no reason. We don't know why also. They're like a, li- a bunch of small kids. No, it's because they're step-siblings, right? Kononya. Yeah, whatever. And then the whole group starts to fight with each other for no reason also. Yeah. You know? And then they do... And they are excited by stupid things. I was in my 20s before. Hmm. 20 over years ago. Right? Mm. I go to, I've been to the beach with my friends. You don't run into the water and splash Ah splash water at each other. Oh my god. Do you really do that? Seriously? Wait, if you're twenty something, mm. do you go into the pool and you go into the pool or beach and then oh splash splash oh, oh, oh. Like, like 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 you're five years old? Do you really do that? Right? I usually go to the beach. Okay lah, go into the water, play with the waves, chill out, hang out with my friends, chit chat, yala. But we don't go like a whole group, you know, oh my god, then catch, catch each other, throw into the water, oh my god. So that just annoys me lah, because these kids, these, they're, they're, what kind of characters are these? And speaking of characters, all of their characters are not even one dimensional, they are like half dimensional. <laughs> okay? No character. <laughs> I want, I don't know, my friend asked me, you want tickets? Sure, I'll go watch it. I'll give anything a try, right? We have to watch it anyway. I will review it lah. Because I don't want to review something that I haven't seen, right? Mm. Well, now that I've seen it, oh, yeah, oh my god. We'll review it lah. I don't know how much it's worth lah, this tape on my SD card. Not tape, SD card. You know, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's horrible lah. No, no point to the story lah. 
Yeah. Uh, especially after watching Imaginor, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, anyway, I just yeah. Look, it <laughs> yeah. was a bad. I don't know, like nobody expected Imaginor to be Imaginor. Yeah. So you watch Imaginor and then you go and see something like this. You're like, what the hell am I doing in my life, lah? Because the the what <sighs> the the launch right? We were at the gala premiere, no? This pull out. It was huge, red carpet for dress to the nines. Is that what you call it? Dress mm. to the nines? Mm. Why don't you dress to the tens? Hello? Big stage, LED screen, everything. Whoa! The hype! But the movie does not match the launch hype. It does mm. not. Yeah, so they book four screens, you know, for the screening, right? We heard them say that, right? The, the, I think so. Yeah. I don't know, it was so loud. <laughs> okay, so that's also the thing. The the premiere was loud. The movie also very loud. It's like just, it's too much. It's too much. It's uh, uh I mentioned this after we were we were out of the screening, and I was saying it was just so loud. It was so loud, and then uh, Zan said like, oh, it's because you're easily scared by the sounds. Ah, uh. I was like, no, it wasn't that. It was just too much. It was just too loud. Like, it was just forcing you to. I don't know. It was just very overwhelmingly like loud, um, and I don't think it was the speakers in the cinema. I really think it's the sound design. And then I was saying that there, throughout the movie, there's always sound, as in like there's no like quiet bit where it's just like dialogue. There's always background sound, and it's very tiring to to watch something for like an hour and a half, two hours that's just constantly got background sound. Uh, penat ah, it's very penat. Um, I thought the backstory or the the ghost origin story uh, was quite good. I thought it was um it was a it was a very nice um story la, and I was actually very interested in that. I was very interested in her backstory, and I was very interested in like this struggle that she had. I mean, it's it's yes, it's derivative, especially like two hundred years ago, a uh, Malay girl cannot be with a Chinese man. Surprise, surprise. Um, because he's a he's like really like really Chinese like mainland China got bread that kind of Chinese. Where singlet kind of Chinese. Uh, speaks yeah. only in Mandarin. Where singlet, you know, where singlet. Even at that time, <laughs> two hundred years ago, he wears singlet. He wears singlet. <laughs> Not pagoda t-shirt, but singlet. Anyway, so I was um I was very interested in her backstory, and I felt like, you know, her pain and everything could be justified and whatever. But the problem with this film was that. Um, you couldn't empathize with the with the with the character, and then at the end, they try to like resolve it like that with empathy, you know. Mm. And um, she actually reasons with the ghost. She reasons with the ghost. Oh yeah. And we were like, wow, this but is like it reasoning. turned into a CVE film because she can you, know, reason you can with reason the da- with the undead. You can reason with the undead. See, extremism on any level on any. Plain can be solved just by open dialogue. But it didn't work because the ghost pushed her off the point. No, anyway. to save her. To save her? Ah. Well, it was to save her. So, ah. anyway, yeah, like, it worked, like, it worked. Let's just, you know, it say worked? that it, it was resolved. But um, they just didn't, it wasn't treated well, is the problem. It really wasn't treated well. Um, the ghost and her backstory should have been more of the forefront of the film. Than all of the other bits because the other bits were very irrelevant to everything. Um, was how I felt. It would have been a much better film if we had focused more on the the past, the backstory of the island and whatever, uh, and um, not focus so much on doing all the the typical horror movie things, lah. killing them one by one, la, just jump scares, la, whatever, la. That was one. The second thing was. It had, for me, two really good actors in it. It had Namron and it had Alif Sata. Mm. But you would never know that Namron and Alif Sata were in this film because they're so underused. Like, Namron and Alif Sata are really good actors, you know. They have, we've seen films that they've really, really performed in. Namron especially, like, he can play bloody anything and it'll be amazing. But then, like, so underused. So underused. Like, it almost feels like they were put in this film just so that their name could carry the film or whatever. But I really felt like it was uh, it was a waste. Uh. It was a real waste of Namron and Alif Sata's talent. And then like Alif Sata's character also in this film is 
weird. Like, I, I don't know. I Half dimension. Because he's not. He's not part of the group, right? He's someone's cousin he that just tags joined. along because he needs to let go of something. Mother that turns out it's because his mother died of COVID. And it's just, uh, I don't know. It's weird lah. It's just, it's very weird. There was a, there are all these moments in the film where they try to invoke some kind of emotion in you. Like when Alex Sata was having a moment with that cat and talking about his mother. And then like, yeah, the whole thing with the ghost. And it just doesn't work because it's too underdeveloped. They focus so much on all these frills lah, I guess. That they don't really, the substance. You know, the inti party of the story is like... Nothing. Yeah, it's not there. If, and if it's there, you gotta look really, really hard for it. Lah. So it felt like yet another wasted opportunity of a film. I'm still gonna give Web Asia TV a chance whenever they produce a film. Yeah, I'll of course. still go and watch because, you know, who knows, it might get better, right? Yeah. Uh, but this is not the film where they got better. Lah. You know, uh, hmm. Hmm. so watch it, don't watch it. Oh, good. Yeah, I was just gonna say let's just end it because it's not worth the space on <laughs> YouTube and whatever. Uh, no, don't, I, I say don't, no need to watch it. Lah. Go and watch Imaginor instead. It's yeah. still playing in the cinema. Go watch Imaginor instead. Okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or any other film. How do Malam still playing or not? A bit lah, here and there. I think. I'm not sure. Yeah. But yeah. Im imagine or though. Mm. So yeah, um, like this video. Don't like this video. Subscribe. Let us know if you have watched it. Subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel. At Fabidin. Yeah. Or go to Fabidin.com to get everything. Follow us on all our social media platforms at Fabidin. Or go to Fabidin.com to get everything. Uh, mm. You've been <laughs> watching and listening to the Fabidin Film Club. I'm assuming I'm Zain Azli. And I'm Shah Ibu Sawan. <laughs> <laughs>